Hello and welcome to another Warhammer the Old World video. Today I'm going to be painting some squig hoppers. As you can see I've based these on square bases because I'm using them in Warhammer the Old World and not in Age of Sigmar. I've undercoated these models white, that is I have primed them with a white spray paint. My first step as always is to give them a good healthy coat of null oil. This is to provide shading for the speed paints and contrast paints that I tend to paint with these days. I do use traditional paints as well but I try not to if I can help it because I find that the speed paints and the contrast paints give me the finish and the results that I want when I paint a model these days. As you can see, all 10 models have been painted with null oil and allowed to dry. Make sure they're dry before going on to this step. I'm now going to use white paint and give the models a good healthy dry brush, a heavy dry brush of white. And the idea here is to bring all the raised areas back to the original or close to original white colour and leave the recesses black or at least a dark grey. We we'll want those recesses to provide our shading without having to add additional steps through the use of paint. This is kind of the result you're looking for. You can see here white on the raised areas and dark recesses, black or dark grey. I'm going to start with the goblin skin tone and I'm going to use Gilly Dew which is normally paint or speed paint. This is the colour I've been using for all my goblin skin and uh, it, it's really suitable, I really like it. Again, this is down to personal preference. Army Painter and Games Workshop make multiple different green colours. Just find one that you like and use it. Next up I'm going to use Pallid Bone and I'm going to paint all the teeth and the horns and the nails and anything else that I deem to be a bone colour is going to get hit with this colour here. Next up I'm going to use a Citadel layer called Screaming Skull and I'm going to be dry brushing it over the areas that I have painted with the bone colour. And this is just to add a little more definition and a, and a free highlight to those bone areas. You see yourself, you can miss this step if you wish, but I chose to do it. And now for the colour of the squig, I'm going to use Poppy Red, which is a, a brilliant red, as it says on the bottle. Um, some of these Army Painter Speed Paints have odd names, 
and they're not the color they state. However, this is a nice poppy red type color. And as you can see, you can see the black and the darkness underneath it here because the paint is nice and translucent. One coat's all it's going to take, with the occasional going back over to hit little areas of white that you may have missed. You'll also notice that I leave areas around the mouth, um, you could call them lips I suppose, and that's because I want to add a different red here and uh, add a bit of a transition. There's many different ways to put paint on a miniature. You can paint over a black undercoat if you're using a traditional paint. You can paint over a, a different coloured primer. Let's say you could use a bone colour primer or you could use a light brown primer and you can paint over the top of that and some people do. I find that these uh, speed paints and contrast paints are best suited over a white background, a white primer. Next colour up I'm going to use is bright red. Army Painter have it labelled as bright red. It's actually more of an orangey red colour. And I'm going to use it to paint the areas of the squig's front. The front round the face, like the lips and the inside of the mouth. And the gums between the teeth. I'm going to hit with this colour. And you'll see here that it's just... It's subtly different, but it's different enough where you can see it. And it actually looks quite good, especially when it's dry and you, you see it in, fle in the flesh, so to speak. It, it looks really nice. I'm very happy with it. Next up is Broadsword Silver. I'm going to use it to hit all the areas of metalwork on the miniatures. The Goblin Riders have like some armoured plates, especially on the cavalry spear or lance arm side. You'll see it here around the shoulder. The occasional one has like a little back plate as well, which you can hit with this colour. I also chose to hit the tips of some of the lances, especially this forked one with this colour. You'll see yourself exactly where you should be hitting with metal. That's if you choose to make it metal, you could make it a different colour if you wished. I'm now going to hit the eyes on the squigs and I'm going to use me as yellow. Um, I have went in here, I didn't show it on video, but I've went in with the white paint again and give all the eyeballs a little dot of white. If you make any mistakes it's not a big deal. Because it's white you can go back over it again with your base red colour and hide a multitude of sins. So don't you don't need to be super um, accurate with this step but be as accurate as you can and that way you, you can you know take as little time as possible. I'm now moving on to the cloaks and the clothing of the Goblin Riders and I'm going to use Tyrian Navy. That's the colour I've chosen from uh, basically from a poll from you guys and also it was my favourite as well from uh, the colours that I was presenting for goblin clothing night goblin clothing in particular it fits really well, it looks a bit more blue when it goes on here but once it dries it's actually much darker yet you can still see the hints of blue through it very suitable I think for night goblins And I'm back to Citadel and a contrast paint called the Goros Dunes. And I'm going to use it to paint the cavalry spears or lances if you prefer to call them that. Again it's just a straight over the top of the, the shaded white. And very simple job to do. Hard to make a mistake here. Use a half decent brush 
doesn't even need to be a super um, fine brush but just one with a decent point so you're not hitting any other areas of the miniature The final step was to paint the mushrooms and some, some other small areas and small details and I used a variety of colours. I'm just showing you this Moonlight Coral as one example. But basically go in and pick whatever colours you have in your colour palette uh, that you like and you think would be suitable. You want to pick colours that contrast or clash with the squigs so they don't all blend into one. You can paint the odd red mushroom but don't paint too many of them red. Pick different colours. You'll see the finished product here in a second. Um, I also, when I was doing the bases, I did my usual method of uh, a blob of PVA mixed with brown paint. And then once that was once, once that was drying, I give it a coating of two different grades of sand. And then some static grass followed by some tufts. And that was it. That's the job done. You'll see here that they're finished. I'm really happy with them. Um, Hopefully you've got something from this video. Don't be deterred by the fact that these are odd looking wee monsters. Um, they're very easy to paint as long as you use uh, speed paints or contrast paints. If you want to do them with a traditional paint again, they're easy enough to paint. It's just going to be more steps and take you more time. Something that I don't really want to put into them, if I'm honest. So hopefully you've got something from this video. If you have, please click the subscribe button if you haven't already. You'd be doing me a big favour and I appreciate it very much. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.